Good morning, Metal Edge Internet. Welcome to a new episode of the Metal Meltdown. And today we are looking at a brand new EP from the American extreme metal group Tombs entitled Monarchy of Shadows. Tombs is an American post metal black metal band that's been kicking around for just over a decade now. And while I've never been a massive fan of their particular brand of darkness, I have enjoyed every record as they've come out, and I would say that with time, these records have legitimately really grown on me. I would even go as far as to say that their last two albums, Savage Gold and The Grand Annihilation, probably stand as some of the strongest black metal of the last decade. Those albums now paving a way for the next phase of Tombs, now hinted at via this EP, Monarchy of Shadows, which on surface level definitely seems like business as usual for the band, but digging deeper I found a lot of different sounds, flavors, and aesthetics that, while not totally alien to Tombs, definitely have not been explored in the same ways before as they're explored on Monarchy of Shadows. The first thing I noticed on this EP was how much more inherently black metal it was in comparison to the band's other releases. Granted, the post-metal and the alternative influences were never the forefront of the sound, especially not in the same way that we look at artists like Death Heaven, for instance, but here in particular, this is so much more savage, icy, and brutal in comparison to the band's last studio album. The guitars, the drums, the vocals, it's a lot more violent and abhorrent. The atmosphere is a lot more icy and harkens back to the traditional Norwegian black metal sound. Post metal is definitely still an element of this record, but it's a lot more subtle and oftentimes it's used to elevate a lot of very weird tribal melodies that make this feel more like a melodic black metal record rather than something on par with the aforementioned of Death Heaven. Take for instance tracks like Monarchy of Shadows and Man Behind the Sun, which support some very dry, ritualistic chants and subtle melodies across blatant blasts of pure black metal. The former track even implements some very dark, swelling strings in the track's opening, in turn opening this entire EP on a particularly ominous and foreboding note. While the latter gets a little bit more experimental and unpredictable in the second half of the song, bringing in some weird time changes and eventually slowing down into this blackened, doomy, gothic drawl. Another track like Necro Alchemy definitely uses a similar blueprint to that of the aforementioned Monarchy of Shadows and Man Behind the Sun, but it also embraces black metal's more ritualistic and supernatural side with menacing zombie-like vocal assaults, haunting wails, and some pretty gory and devastating lyrics that would not feel out of place on a more graphic Triptychon song. With lyrics such as, I am the worm, destroyer of your flesh, creeper in the void, inhabit crimson soil, immured in earthly clay, eyeless serpent spawn, deep beneath the ground, what lies beyond necroalchemy. And I'm particularly loving Once Falls the Guillotine, which borrows a little bit from the most recent Skeleton Witch record to create something a little bit more bombastic and raucous. It's inherently exciting to see Tombs dip their toes a little bit further into the pool of icy, raw, traditional black metal while still retaining some of their more experimental soundscapes and aesthetics. The only issue I ultimately have being that this so-called EP is kind of long for an EP. I mean, this is 34 minutes long, really only about 11, 12 minutes shorter than the band's previous record. Now granted, excluding Grand Annihilation, it's worth noting that most of Tomb's records do wrap up at just under an hour long. So I guess objectively speaking, this is shorter and definitely fits the boundaries of an EP more than, you know, winter hours or something. But even so, just saying that out loud, a 34 minute EP, it's a little weird. Okay, so it turns out that was a bad example. Winter Hours is actually 37 minutes long, but I wasn't entirely off because Path of Totality and Fear is the Weapon both clock in just under an hour. I'd also like to point out that the EP logic makes even less sense now since Winter Hours is only a few minutes longer than this release, Monarchy of Shadows. Like what exactly qualifies Winter Hours as a record and Monarchy of Shadows as an EP. This isn't necessarily an actual issue in regards to the quality of the release, but it does just seem inherently kind of confusing, especially when Wikipedia and Spotify both list Monarchy of Shadows as a full studio album, despite Season of Mist marketing this as an EP. 
Like, I've always seen an EP as the appetizer before the main course, and in this analogy, we've got a pretty fucking big-ass plate of antipasto, and I don't know if I need to order the main course now. But hey, I guess that's an issue that we can address when the main course actually comes out. For now, we've got a pretty satisfying, ferocious little blast of weird, melodic, semi-experimental black metal that I'd be more than happy to give a 3.5 out of 5. If you've enjoyed Previous Tombs record, definitely check this out. If you're one of those people that's really hated the idea of post-anything in your metal, in your black metal particularly, you might enjoy seeing more traditional black metal flavors and ideas beginning to realize within Tombs' sound. Definitely recommend this to newcomers as well, especially considering this is a much more digestible record, again, compared to the hour-long records that Tombs normally releases. With that in mind, I'd even say that maybe the EP release is a good route for Tombs to go in the future. I mean, I probably got a lot more enjoyment and satisfaction out of this than I did out of the band's longer, arguably more bloated records. More importantly, I'm just hoping that whatever this EP inevitably paves the way for is just as much fun as this EP, Monarchy of Shadows. 3.5 out of 5, pretty damn good release. And that is it for the Metal Meltdown. I'm not an expert, nor do I claim to be, so what do you think? Do you like this record? Do you not like this record? And what do you want to hear from me next? Thank you for watching. Make sure you press subscribe so you get updates on the Metal Meltdown e fucking immediately, and you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.